Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about a Jamia paper about expert level sleep scoring with deep neural network. So this is a joint work by Cedar Biswa, Hao Chi Sun, Balaji Goparaju, Brandon Westover, myself, and Matt Bianchi. So this is a work published a couple of years ago in 2018. So at the time, a deep neural network just become popular in medical domains. So this is one of those type of work that trying to automate some current uh, manual tasks by human, but trying to do it with the algorithm, in this case, deep neural network mo uh, method, and to achieve the same expert level performance. And towards the end of this talk, I will also uh, present a new project that we built on top of this work and to go from uh, automating sleep medicine at the sleep lab to home monitoring and beyond. So here's the motivation, a sleep disorder is a very prevalent condition. In the US, estimated 50 to 70 million individuals have sleep disorders. Many of those are treatable. For example, 25 million have obstructive sleep apnea can be treated if diagnosed. But many of them are not, di not diagnosed. So we want to kind of help uh, diagnose sleep disorder. So the, the, the central diagnostic tool for for sleep medicine is this overnight sleep study. So our immediate goal in this paper is to automate the sleep diagnosis that, uh, that's done in sleep lab. So if you go to a sleep lab uh, uh, for a sleep study, you'll be connected with all kinds of sensors, right? EEG sensor, breathing sensor, and so on, to measure all kinds of uh, signals that related to your sleep. And all this time series data uh, put together is called polysonogram, PSG. And after an, a night of study, then uh, a human expert, a sleep technician, and a sleep doctor have to look at the, inf I mean, the, the raw data uh, every 30 seconds, right, to go through this whole night, eight hours of uh, study, trying to label them. And this is a very labor intensive work. And it usually takes one or two hours uh, of time for an expert to label such a study. And ultimate goal is we want to do this type of sleep monitoring at home. There are many devices now claim can do sleep monitoring at home, but still the, the quality of those uh, devices are still varies, mainly due to algorithm limitation. So this, in this work, we want to propose a deep learning based uh, algorithm to improve the quality of sleep diagnosis. So the approach is actually quite uh, standard. It's a combination of recurrent neural network and convolutional neural network, and, or combine them together called recurrent convolutional neural network. So let me explain this entire pipeline. As I said, you, I mean, for sleep study, there are multiple different types of sensors will be connected to each individual. And then those sensors will generate this time series type of data uh, overnight, such as EEG data and this chest bell and measure the, the breathing and, and EMG data measure the movement. And that's the raw data. So after that, uh, what we want to get out of this from this raw signals are sleep phenotypes. For example, based on EEG information primarily, we can get the sleep stages, and there's five different stages, wake, REM, non-REM, stage one, stage two, and stage, two, stage three, excuse me. And then uh, for, uh, based on the breathing, you can uh, detect apnea events. Right? So for example, all this vertical bar here indicate there is events of apnea, and based on those frequency of the apnea events, we can diagnose patients with different level of apnea severity. And then we have the, based on the movement, we can detect periodical limb movement or PLM. And the raw signal also actually being processed with some signal processing tool to become the spectrogram, looking at the, the frequency domain information as opposed to raw data. And that's the information the algorithm used to produce the corresponding phenotypes, like sleep stages, apnea events, and uh, limb movement events. And the architecture we're using is <clears throat> this 
start from the raw signal every 30 seconds as an input data point. And then we convert that into the spectrogram that looks like this. And then the spectrogram will be the input to a convolution neural network module. And uh, the, the output of the CNN will become the input to a recurrent neural network, an RNN module. Uh, a, and we have several layers of RNN. Then finally, we produce the label. The label could be sleep stages, for example. So that's the neural network architecture we're using. So in terms of uh, accuracy of this model, you can see for different tasks, they, they all perform very well. For sleep staging, here's a confusion matrix of this uh, multi-class classification task. And uh, every row is a human ground truth label. And the columns are the algorithm prediction. And I mean, if you, we got a high value on diagonal, that means it's very accurate. So for example, for several of the stages, like awake, RAM, N3, N2, we have very high accuracy, above 80%. Uh, well, for N1, it's much lower. It's only uh, slightly less than 60%. Um, I'll explain some intuition why that's the case. But um, just so you know that even humans uh, often disagree on class of N1. So this ambiguity is expected. So for apnea detection, the metric is Actually, this is a regression task, and we have a predictive um, apnea hypopnea index, which is a value between 0 and 100. The higher, uh, the more severe the apnea. And then the y -ax, I mean, sorry, the x-axis is the true uh, AHI. The y-axis is a predictive AHI. If the, each uh, point or each circle here indicate that 30 second, or sorry, that's uh, one patient. And if um, the individual is on this, 45 degree diagonal, that means the predicted AHI and the true AHI is, um, is the same. So that's good. And you can see overall, this are pretty much along this di I mean, diagonal lines with R square of 0.85. So it's a very good performance. Here, the true AHI is really just the human expert uh, diagnosis. So what, what the out based on the experts, uh, output of the a, I mean, apnea event, so you can calculate the HI, but also based on the algorithm, you can calculate the HI as well, then they are pretty much along uh, this diagonal. So it means they're very highly correlated. And similarly, we also uh, kind of breaking down those AHI value into different bucket, right? Above 30 or 15 to 30, 15 to, uh, sorry, five to 15 and less than five. You can see that uh, if you treat this as a classification task, right, the, I mean, the accuracy is also very high. And whenever there is ambiguity, usually with nearby um, class. So that means the prediction is usually not very much off. And so that's for the apnea uh, detection. And finally, we also have a similar uh, lean movement index. And again, the, the predicted lean movement index and the true lean movement index, they're pretty much also very correlated along this uh, 45 degree diagonal with R square of 0.79. So some more detailed result, and just to show you the different variation of models, right? If you use uh, our model, which is CNN plus RNN, you got 87% I mean, accuracy, for example, with spectrogram input. But if you just use the raw waveform as input, then you still get a pretty high, but not as high as just uh, use the spectrogram but still 85% accuracy. But if you only use CNN, the performance is uh, slightly worse. So uh, this RNN components uh, actually improve the, the, the prediction performance a bit. And kappa is another metric that uh, measures the interreader agreement. So the higher, the better. And again, and you can see the CNN plus RNN perform the best. And the bottom uh, two method, logistic regression and random forest, they are based on the expert defined feature. So this is more of a um, classical machine learning methods performance, which is much worse. Right? I mean, random forest is uh, slightly better, but still it's like below 75% accuracy. While with a deep learning method, you can reach 85% accuracy. And early on, I mentioned for class, uh, for sleep, sleep staging, the most of the class, you can get very accurate uh, classification, except for N1. And we want to understand why. Uh, then we use a visualization method called TCNE plot, uh, use the, the latent uh, the output of the RNN before the classification layer, um, use uh, that as embedding for each 30 second uh, 
EPOD, and then project this in all those EPOD into uh, this two-dimensional space, you can see that all those different classes are well separated. N2 is here, and the raw signal of N2 look like this. Uh, awake is over here, and the, the signal look like this. And uh, a RAM stage look like this. And here's the signal of, for corresponding to RAM stage. And three look like this, right? You can see a very a slow wave uh, that's a corresponding to deep sleep. And N1 is like this, right? So it, you can see that this N1 cluster is in the center of uh, all those clusters. That's why it has a lot of ambiguity when, when there's overlapping regions and that will introduce uh, inaccuracy for N1. That's why N1 has a lower accuracy compared to the rest of the classes. And okay, so next, uh, just to summarize, uh, we, I talked about this phenotyping uh, sleep scoring task with deep neural network. And if you think about this um, in a practical setting, once you train the model, deploy that on the eight hour of EEG signals or polysonogram uh, signals, you can do that on a I mean, regular laptop. We tested in with, within five minutes for scoring a sleep versus a, a couple of hours of human labors. So that's a huge improvement. Accuracy-wise, uh, we're fairly accurate for both uh, staging, apnea detection, and limb movement. And uh, this is uh, done with a sort of very large data. So I, I didn't mention it uh, earlier, but it's uh, from Mass General Hospital. We, we, we got uh, 10,000 patients' data, over 80,000 hours of EEG, and they're labeled. Right? So we, we have close to half a million labels and um, raw data size of 3.2 terabytes. It's a very large data set to train this. And in the paper, we also uh, tried to see how generalizable are the model across different data set. We train a model from MGH data set, then test it on a completely separate uh, cohort of patients. Uh, sleep heart health data set. It actually also worked very well. So that's the summary of this uh, this work. And so I finished talking about this paper. If you're interested, um, it will be a, a link in the video in the description below. And next, uh, I, I just want to mention this is a work we, we have done I mean, three, three, more than three years ago. And uh, what we're working on now is a, a exciting project that's based on that foundation work I just presented, but go beyond just a sleep lab, uh, sleep staging. So this is a project funded by National Science Foundation called DeepSense, uh, interpretable deep learning for zero effort phenotype sensing and its application to uh, sleep medicine. And it's a, a collaboration between myself uh, at U University of Illinois and uh, Dina Katabi at MIT and Brennan Westover at the Mass General Hospital. So just give you a high level overview about this project. I already presented the, the first task of the project that is, that is automation of sleep medicine at sleep lab. And the second task of this is go beyond sleep lab. Can we uh, use some uh, devices at home to do sleep monitoring? And in this particular work, this is uh, led by uh, Professor uh, Katabi's lab. And she has this very uh, cool radio frequency uh, monitoring device, right? This is showing in the red uh, box. Um, you can put it on the wall. It's like a router. But I mean, it's unlike most of the sensors, I mean, wearables, you have to wear it. I and mean, here, this is uh, contactless, right? You can just put it on the side. And uh, we're trying to see if this, can, this device um, can based on radio frequency signals to monitoring your sleep. And there's some uh, early work, work based on this type of devices and done by uh, her lab. And this, uh, I, intrigued, I mean, I will not talk about this paper here. It will take a lot more time, but uh, I encourage you to check out the paper published at SCML in 2017, uh, which is about learning sleep stages from radio uh, signals. So task three, right? this is where all those two different data modality uh, integrate together. We have a lot of those polysonogram data, PSG data that has been collected from sleep labs over the past decades. Right? That's where we got the training data of 10,000 uh, patients. And we start to collect some of the radio frequency signals, but that's probably not enough to train a very accurate model in a short time frame. So we have uh, some conceptual framework to deal with this uh, cross-modality integration. 
So you have a small number of subjects, right? The, the rows are corresponding to your patient or subjects. The columns are different modalities, right? You can, you can uh, conceptually see the setting as the following, right? So you have a small number of uh, patients that has both the PSG data and the uh, RF signals. So that's the data we're trying to collect at Sleep Lab at uh, MGH. So we put uh, both the standard uh, sleep monitoring uh, setup there, but also put the, the new device there, collect uh, this synchronized data. But it, it won't be a lot, right? Maybe there's a uh, hundred nights of uh, such data being collected. And then we also have uh, some of the um, uh, kind of the, the PSG data in the past, right? That's actually uh, quite a bit. And, but they don't have the corresponding real uh, frequency signals. And then we can also imagine, right, this uh, RF signal devices over time can be deployed at home or, or being used just directly without the, the fancy setup of uh, PSG data. So that's a, kind of another uh, set of data set uh, we will have, right? So you can see there's three different parts of data. We call the PSG data rich data because that's a, a have more reliable measure and uh, more expensive to collect. And then we also have the poor data, right? Real frequency data probably is easier to uh, create, I mean, to, to generate if you just put the device at home. And so we want to kind of learn a, a model that can uh, help the, ultimately we want a classifier that can help uh, classify radio frequency signals to do sleep staging, for example, or sleep monitoring. And, but leveraging this, uh, some historical data we have on PSG and uh, some of this combined data. And um, the conceptual uh, ideas has been presented in uh, one of our paper in uh, EHCHI 2019 called uh, RDPD, Rich Data Helps Poor Data Via Imitation. Right? So I may present that in a separate video um, some future time. Okay, so to, in conclusion, this is a, a new exciting project that uh, uh, we have started uh, actually uh, last, since last year. And it's, it's about um, extending this uh, sleep staging work to the next level, to do home monitoring, but also propose some interpretable deep learning model for doing this work.